Hello everyone and welcome back to my flight career series, this time in Microsoft Flight Sim 10 and we are on the runway ready to go flying to Bremerton to continue my flight training there. So without further ado, let me start things off. Uh, it's tough to steer this plane, I've discovered. And that's been annoying. So at the flight we've got one passenger and planned flight time is two hours and now 17 minutes. I did find a flight manual. This is the Lancair Legacy. I forgot to mention that. This is Lancair Legacy and I did find a flight manual for it. And it didn't specify the runway length, but boy is this runway at Hayward really, really tight. Even for takeoff. For landing, I don't know if it's really suitable. I might have to request a different uh, runway in the future. And I have to fly. I'm flying VOR to VOR. I bet we're flying to Oakland first. And that's a heading 295. So yeah, according to the manual, the approach speed for landing is 110 knots, so this thing is pretty fast. Technically, this does have a pressurized cabin, but we're not going to use that. that uh, that's the instrumentation you see there. This is the only plane I've got right now that has a uh, pressurized cabin. But I don't think FS passengers understand that, understands that it has a pressurized cabin, so using that will not be sufficient for FS passengers I think I have to tell FS passengers in the flight model about that whole business now it's all well and good to say I'm flying VOR to VOR but what about my avionics I still haven't figured out that's those avionics these guys don't seem interested in turning on Which is not handy. Okay, I'm turning too far. On the other hand, I can do visual flight rules. We do have VFR to work with. Though I have to avoid the clouds a bit. Okay, let me see if my autopilot works. Sort of important information. Okay, looks like the passengers are calming down. Well, heading hold seems to work just fine. This is the look from outside, and yeah, you know what? There is enough room to carry two more passengers. Really. This is not that small plane. It's a pretty light plane. It's a pretty light plane, but it does have room and does have speed. We're passing 10,000 feet, and I was trying to figure out how to... Ah, oh, there we go. And we're going to cruise at 11,000 feet, which should still be fine for an unpressurized cabin. If FS Passengers is going to be picky about that. Uh, that control stick is sort of in the way, ah, oh, there we go, of critical details that I would like to know. I mean, the autopilot works, so that's one part of this stack that seems to work just fine. Our flight plan expected us, whoops. Hey, I just left Oakland Center. Jeez, alright. According to our plan, we were supposed to be going at a ground speed of 260. Romeo Delta 956. Contact Abbas approach on 128.4. 128.4. Romeo Delta 956. And uh, looking at the. Travis approach. Romeo Delta 
Oh my god, they keep telling me to contact Oakland Center instead. No, nobody wants to deal with me. Um, so yeah, it looks like uh, we've got 259 knot ground speed, which is pretty much exactly what the, the plan said that we should be at. So even though we're at the upper end of the velocity range, we should be okay. Um, I still would rather be able to tune the VOR somehow. Um, neither... Uh, MXW is correct, actually. Huh. Oh, it's, uh, going with, uh, GS1, then apparently GS1 is automatically correctly tuned. That's probably the GPS? Anyway. I, I guess that'll be alright. I don't need, I don't need these. Looks like we've got it here. I think this is Lake Berryessa that we're beside. Pretty distinctive. Yep, I think that's Lake Berryessa. Looking good. Not always a lake that looks wonderful, but looking good here. Okay, we are two miles away from our first you are, and it automatically changed. That's nice. I mean, especially nice since... Otherwise, this stack is not working very well. Dang you, Garmin. Why can't you work? But at least we've got this working for us. Automatically. Without me even having to change the VOR settings. I'll take it. It's a little bit too automated, but... Given the situation, I am appreciative. Picking up the track to Red Bluff, it looks like. RBL. And that's 42 nautical miles away. Well, we've got some clouds up front. I'm expecting that my current altitude will keep me below that cloud layer, like right below it. But if it doesn't, we might have to descend. Looks good so far, though. Well, they say that you can see Mount Shasta from hundreds of miles away, but not today. I certainly can see some mountains, but they're not identifiably Mount Shasta. Yep, we probably won't get a good look at it until we get closer to it. But we're still on the same basic track that we took with the Cessna, except this time we're going a lot faster. It was basically 6 point... Uh, no, wait. 6.5 hours. 6.5 hours, and we're going to cover it in 2 hours this time. 2.3, really. So, pretty good. It's nice to have this plane. It's probably the fastest plane I'll be flying for a while. Okay, we've got some turbulence here, so seatbelt sign on. And still watching that cloud line. Somebody had suggested the Spartan, and I will uh, make sure to fly that. I do have it. That's a freeware plane. And... Yeah, we need to descend. Let's keep it steady. We're four miles from Red Bluff. Okay, and we also have a change of course. This, well, not really. Uh, it's still 345 to OED. Really, we're just right below the clouds. Total range on this thing is more than a thousand nautical miles. And probably much more than a thousand nautical miles, because that's only really five hours. Oh, sorry, four hours. Four hours. Then again, we're consuming about 24 gallons per hour. And we've got 74 left. So basically, we're talking about three hours left. 
We've traveled a bit, of course, already. And I wouldn't say I'm flying at the most efficient speed possible. I'm pushing it a little bit. Can't say I have a very good handle on how to use the propeller pitch control to help things. Uh, it just reduces the RPM. And I suppose I ought to reduce it to below the yellow zone. Well, we're definitely over some of the more mountainous regions close to Mount Shasta, but I can't see Mount Shasta. And I'm somewhat concerned that my course will just run me right into it if I can't quite see. Okay, well, there seems to be a gap in the clouds there. At least for the moment, it doesn't look like we're going to be running into anything. That's nice. And there is Mount Shasta, finally. Our first glimpse of it, finally. Shasta and uh, the little uh, sub-mountain is Shastina. Well, considering the situation, I think we can go back to 11,000 feet. Over mountainous terrain, it's good to keep a uh, lookout for the radar altitude. It was reading uh, 2,500 feet there for a bit, but that's plenty of clearance, of course. There's Mount Shasta again. Now, that front of clouds, I wonder about. It's just, uh, it seems like a very slim line. I mean, it doesn't seem very deep. Oh no, we've got some turbulence already. Uh, and that cloud line looks a little bit lower than we are right now. Oh, here we go again. Well, the ground is still visible, but forward, there's a lot of cloud. Now, of course, this plane is certified for IFR flight, if necessary, but I'm not. I'm not certified for IFR flight. Okay, we are now past the previous VOR and on our way to UBG which I have to say doesn't ring a bell as far as VORs are concerned. I don't know what UBG is but it's 172 nautical miles away. It, it's not Eugene. Okay so I just looked it up and UBG is Newburg is Center, Romeo, the Delta town Niner, that five, we're headed for. With you. Romeo Delphic Niner 56 Seattle Center Roger Altimeter 2998 Newburgh is just south of Portland Might have to go even lower Roger, given these clouds now We we'll see Oh, well we definitely have to get the seatbelts on Here's what it looks like from outside plane is looking spiffy, of course. A little bit of uh, aliasing on the edge when you're zoomed out. Smoother when you zoom in. But then when you're zoomed in, you don't get much scope. Seattle Center. Mooney, November 9er, 9er 2, 9er Whiskey. Ready to copy IFR clearance. Oscar 08. Mooney, November 9er, 9er 2, 9er Whiskey. Is clear to Oscar 08. Airport as file. Climate maintained 13,000. Departure frequency is 121.4 squad 4476. Clearance void 30 minutes from now. Okay, well, the clouds are getting pretty serious now. I can only see a sliver of ground, and that's not good enough. And I've checked the map, the actual VFR map, and it looks like we can certainly descend lower than this, so I'm going to do that. We'll go to 8,000 feet so that we can get below the clouds. And that should still clear any obstructions along the way. We're past the highest of the highlands as far as uh, Northern California and Oregon are concerned. We are 126 nautical miles south of Newburgh. 
and approximately that south of Portland. Of course, it'll be less efficient flying low, but we've got plenty of reserves. Okay, leveling out at 8,000. Autopilot has certainly been handy considering the weather conditions. All the bouncing back and forth will be tough to handle manually. Okay, well, there's more clouds now going down further. Which is fine, because it'll give us a better look at Portland anyway. It's not like we're interfering with airliner flight levels, so... Wait till we have to get clearance for flight level changes from ATC. That's going to happen eventually. But not with a plane like this. Nice gleam on the edge of the wing. I like that. That's good. It looks good in here. It actually looks a lot better in here than outside, to be honest. Well, checking the map, but we are good to descend to 5,000 if necessary. And we'll see where the clouds are at here. Well, that uh, hill looks pretty darn close to us. But at the same time, my radar altimeter does not seem to be reading it. So I suppose it must be more than 2,500 feet unless something else is wrong. That cloud layer looks mighty low. Um, hopefully it's thin. Seems to evaporate as we get into it. Well, now that we're descending, we need to adjust the mixture a bit. That right there seems optimal. Romeo, Alpha Niner 56. Contact Cascade Approach on 127.5. Going to 127.5, Romeo Alpha Niner 56. Okay, uh, things seem to be clearing up uh, here closer to 5,000 feet. So we'll level out at 5,000 and hopefully that'll be alright. Well, got to admit that's some formidable looking weather we've got there. Yeah, look at that. It's jostling us a bit. Seatbelt sign is back on again. Lots of clouds. Not very friendly piloting weather. I also should note that we're headed back to Bremerton, which is where I did the flight training before. But I'm not actually sure that that's where we're going to be continuing our flight training. Uh, uh, it'll depend on the lessons and maybe they've picked a different location but I'm gonna assume that that's where the lessons will continue or in the Seattle area and hope that that's true. We'll just pretend that that's where all the lessons are taking place. It's just simpler that way. Otherwise I'll have to actually preview each of the lessons ahead of time to figure Romeo out where they're going to be. Contact Portland approach on 126.0. Okay. 126.0 for Romeo Alpha 956. All right, we are 3 nautical miles away from the next VOR and I can barely see the ground again even though we're just 5000 feet above sea level. The ceiling is crashing down on me here. World Travel 175, you are two, three miles west, turn right heading 075, descend and maintain 2100. Well, there we go. We are head to OLM. That's 98 nautical miles. Contact Portland Tower on 
and o OLM is Olympia, so not too far away from our destination. Now. But it's getting to be non VFR conditions, to be honest. Seriously non VFR conditions. I'll descend further and see if we can keep it decent. Well, if you were wondering whether there's a rain effect, we can now hear the rain finally. This is the first time in this flight that we do hear rain. Well, this is already too low. Taking a look at the map, this is about it as far as how low we can go and not risk bump bumping into some terrain along the way. This is the scene from outside. You can see we're not flying that far above the ground. And everything is just ominous. We can see the ra radar altimeter there. Now it's got a proper needle. And I'll be keeping a close eye on that as we continue into Washington. Hopefully at Bremerton it's not going to be IFR conditions, otherwise we're going to have to to head for an alternate airport. We do have the fuel to do that, but it'll be inconvenient. Well, my passenger's nervous due to the weather condition. Can't blame my passenger for that. Well, there isn't even any point to look out for Mount Rainier. I think there's a shadow of it there, but I can't be sure. I, I should think that's just a glare off of the windshield. So, yeah, but things seem to be clearing up in front of us. Oh, wait, maybe that's it. Maybe. Yeah, just as I say that, things clear up. I guess Washington State really did want us to get a look at Mount Rainier. That is Mount Rainier, right? I don't think that's Mount St. Helens. It's a little bit flat on the top, but not that flat. Wow, this is about as much landscape as we've managed to see this entire flight, well, at least since the Bay Area. Okay, things have gotten a little bit more turbulent and less clear again. So we'll see. We're still a little bit far away to contact Bremerton to see if they're okay with VFR. Okay, there's Bremerton National. Okay, tuning traffic. Well, it's automated. There's no tower, so they can't tell me it's IFR only. All right, select the runway, runway one, definitely. Now uh, we just need to, yeah, um, tune weather. Zero, pop on whiskey, tango, automated weather observation. Zero, two, four, three, Zulu. Wind one six seven at seven. Visibility greater than two zero miles. Well, it says visibility greater than twenty miles. One thousand. Okay, back to traffic. I'll announce my landing intentions. Position. Kilo, Papa, Whiskey, Tango, traffic, Romeo, Alpha, Niner, five, six, is two, two miles south. Time to slow down. Six hundred, inbound to land, runway one. This plane has enough trouble slowing down, so we might as well get started on that soon. Well, two kilometers is fine for leveling out. We seem to be able to see the terrain, so that's okay. And time for the autopilot to take a hike.
Okay, flap setting one. Flap setting. Waiting for it to get within the white band. There we go. And speed brakes off. Okay. Alright. Well, I've been around this way before, but I can't see any lights yet. I was hoping I'd recognize the terrain a bit more. How's our radar altimeter showing a thousand feet? That seems reasonable. I said approach speed was 110 knots, so I'm gonna try and get it there. Make sure to trim a bit. It's three miles to the runway. Having trouble seeing it though. Oh, that's it. <laughs> okay, we're good. There's the runway right there. These bloody trees though. They didn't even give me the option of a different runway. Well, this doesn't seem like the right place, is it? Maybe I'm going to the wrong place. Oh, this is not the right runway. Uh-oh. Um, let me select a different runway for landing, actually. Let me go with runway 19. East, huh? uh, there it is, and there's the pappy on the runway I want. Alright, we'll go with that. Let me come around before I bump into something. That's a severe bank angle right there. Alright, that's pretty much perfectly lined up, so I couldn't ask for any more. Let's announce it. Announce on final. Perfect. I'm too low though. Uh, that's because I'm also going too fast. Oh, there we go. That's better. Slow down. We're too high still and too fast. Let's get the speed brakes out. That's not the key for speed brakes. That would be the key for speed brakes in X Plane 11, but that's not here. Okay. Angle, angle, push, push. We're trying to land here, no pushing. Angle, angle, push, push. Angle, angle, push, push. Okay. Angle, angle, push, push. Come on, baby. Angle, angle, push, push. All right. That was pretty good, actually. Well, we're not gonna have ground, are we? I don't think so. We're a little bit late, 13 minutes, but chalk that up to the weather, really. And I think this must be a slot. Okay, I'll take it. Parking brakes. And let's just uh, make sure lights off. Maybe I oh uh, we shut off the key if we can. And avionics master battery. Okay, very good. And now, seatbelt sign off, and let's see how we did. End flight.
Okay, so... 2 hours 19 minutes, real flight time, well that was fl planned flight time, 2 hours 34 minutes was the real flight time, and 18,000 income, perfect, uh, wait, perfect, except for this parking brake thing, I don't, I, I must have been, when I was taxiing, Yeah, I must have been taxiing and I had to hold for uh, ahead of the runway and I, I don't think I was 62 knots, but whatever, I, how can I argue? Um, Alright, satisfied passengers, not at a scheduled airport, long flight, extreme weather. Well, just a net of four points because of the parking brake thing. But the... They, the passenger said that my reputation should be 100%, so that's a big increase to the company reputation. Okay, well, successful flight. So next time, landing touchdown, it says uh, 328 feet per minute. I thought it was relatively gentle, but okay. Um, 104 knots, but like I said, that's basically how this lands. Uh, so next time, I'm going to continue with the... With the training missions with uh, Rob Machado and we will see how that goes alright so on that note thank you for watching I hope you enjoyed this video if you did enjoy this video please do press like if you have any comments or suggestions please leave them in the comment section below and I'll see you next time